Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and today is another how-to video um, and I'm going to be showing you how to uh, airbrush and repaint uh, a locomotive. I get a lot of questions and comments about the various bits of weathering and repainting that I do on the layout and uh, hopefully this video will answer uh, most of those and uh, give you some ideas and hints and tips on uh, how to go about it. And the reason why I do a lot of uh, repainting is uh, partly because it's quite good fun, I do enjoy doing it, um, but the main reason I do it is uh, to save time and money in waiting for manufacturers to uh, release um, locomotives in the colours that you are interested in. So hopefully this video will help you out, or at least uh, just show you what the process is. Um, this is a difficult job and um, it is, uh, especially for a first time, quite a scary thing to, to do. A uh, typical loco you know, might cost you 70, 80 pounds to then get you know, the stripper out, strip all the paint off it, paint it into a different colour yourself. That's quite a large undertaking and there's an element of uh, fear in uh, screwing it up. So uh, the project I'm going to take you through is uh, the complete respray of a Hornby Class 50. I'm going to be painting this into the original Network South East livery with the upswept stripes at each end. Um, I've chosen this for two reasons. First reason is it's a perfect fit for my layout and it goes well with my repainted Backman Mark II coaches, of which I've done about six of so far. The other reason I went for the original Network South East livery is that livery features a number of colours and is particularly complicated. Um, so it'll give you a good idea of the sort of level of masking and uh, detail you need to go into when repainting something into a complicated livery. As you can see at the moment it's completely black because I have stripped all of the paint off it. This is the standard colour that the uh, plastic body shell is in. Um, so this is what it would have looked like in the Hornby factory before it got painted. I use a variety of products when I'm doing my airbrushing. I'm not going to go through every single one right now, but I'll take you through some of the most important things that you need. Anything else, I'll uh, try and put an annotation in the video or you'll see me using it as we progress through the video. So the first thing you need, obviously, is an airbrush. Um, the airbrush I use is an Iwata Eclipse series airbrush. This is the Eclipse uh, HP-CS variety, and it's served me very well for the last four years. It's a dual action airbrush and it's gravity fed, so uh, the paint goes in the top and is fed by gravity into the nozzle, which gives a nice smooth spray. And uh, because it's dual action, I can vary the amount of paint that's coming out of the gun when I'm doing airbrushing. This is also very useful, this is a, a rotating paint stand. Um, it's made by Tamiya and you can pick it up in most model shops. I also use a variety of paints, um, I mainly use two particular brands. Uh, first brand that I tend to use for repainting is uh, Phoenix Precision. I find their colour matching of uh, original British Rail liveries is particularly good and uh, I've uh, been very impressed with the, uh, the level of colour that I get from their paints. The other paint I use is made by Rail Match and I tend to use my Rail Match paint um, for the application of matte varnishes and uh, weathering colours. Um, Rail Match do a very nice range of weathering colours. I do all the track weathering with Rail Match and any loco weathering is all done using the Rail Match paint. For stripping any paint off models I use uh, two things. I use uh, first thing I use is uh, Phoenix Precision PS18 Super Strip. Um, you can tell by the condition of the label that this stuff is quite good. Um, it strips pretty much any paint off a plastic bodied locomotive without destroying or ruining the plastic. The other thing I'd use for uh, decal and paint removal is uh, just ordinary tea cut that you can get from uh, most car shops like Halfords. Um, I use this particularly if I'm doing a renumbering. Uh, so for example, let's say this locomotive here um, came in this colour, but I wanted to change the running number of the locomotive to uh, one that would have been more commonly seen in the area my layout is set in. Um, so what I would do is get some tea cut on a cotton bud and I would rubber away at the number until the number disappeared. Um, if you're gentle you can preserve the yellow paint underneath and then apply a new number. All of the uh, transfers I use for repainting are from Fox Transfers and uh, I get them all directly from uh, Fox Transfer's website. So that's a brief overview of the type of stuff I paint and uh, what products I use to do it. 
Um, you'll see various other products as we go along that I use for parts of the process. So um, step one of doing any repainting or weathering job is research. You need to find as many pictures as possible of the locomotive you are trying to recreate. Okay, so I've done all the uh, all the research and printed off a load of pictures of the uh, particular locomotive that I'm interested in. Uh, so now I'm going to start on the uh, the respray. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over it with a coat of uh, primer, which is uh, made by Railmatch. It's just some universal white primer. And then uh, once I've put that on, I'm going to go over it with basically the same colour, um, but that will be the uh, the actual Network Southeast uh, dull white. I try and do most of my airbrushing in the shed at the bottom of the garden. Um, if you haven't got one, then uh, try and do it outside or somewhere relatively well ventilated. I've got an extractor fan in here and I also have a heater in the corner if it gets a bit cold like it is today. Um, so it's already quite nice and warm in here so the paint should go on quite nicely. Um, if it's particularly cold or uh, raining a lot I wouldn't recommend doing any airbrushing. I tend to mix all of the paint in the uh, cup of the airbrush so I don't waste any. Um, so I'll pour some of the primer in there and mix it with about 50% uh, paint thinner. Mix it all up and then spray it on the model. I find 50-50 uh, paint to thinners uh, works pretty well for almost uh, any application. Mixed up a small amount of paint. I uh, don't want to apply too much on the first pass. I don't want to go too mental. The last thing you want is a, a run in the paint. Um, the noise you can hear is the extractor fan. So it will be quite noisy while I do this because I'll have the uh, compressor and the extractor on. Just giving it a light dusting. First coat is nice and thin and I'm going to leave that for about 20 minutes to dry. It should dry fairly quickly in here with the heater on. But yeah, so far so good. Alright, it's had about three light coats so far. Um, with each coat I'm leaving it uh, longer to dry between each one. But uh, it's getting there, it's starting to look quite good already. I've moved on to the uh, Network Southeast white paint now. It's had about three light coats so far. It's starting to uh, to build up quite nicely. It'll probably need another coat, and then uh, I'll go from there. But, uh, still wet at the moment. Now, with each coat, I'm leaving it uh, longer and longer to dry. So the first coat I left for about 10 minutes second coat I left for about 15 minutes and this one I'll probably leave for about half an hour because it's starting to build up now and the last thing I want is for any of the paint to run So there we go, the whole thing is now Network Southeast white. So I'm going to leave this to dry for a good 24 hours, let it all harden up uh, because the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, using masking tape um, to pick out uh, the other bits such as the yellow ends and the uh, the blue and the, uh, the red stripe. Um, so if I was to just leave this for an hour and then start masking it, um, it's quite possible that you could pull the paint off the uh, body shell with the tape. So I'm going to let this harden over 24 hours and then I'll uh, come back and carry on. Right, okay, uh, so it's actually been a week since I did this, so uh, this should be nice and dry now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is the yellow ends. Um, the rule I tend to follow is I do the colours in order of lightness. So I start with the white, 
then do the yellow, then do the blue, then do the red, then the grey, and then finally the black roof. When you do the masking it's very important to make sure that you get it right, um, partly because you don't want any paint to run where it shouldn't be, and uh, it's important to make sure obviously that the livery that you're doing is actually accurate to uh, the uh, real thing. So I've got loads of pictures of the real 50 that I am attempting to paint, um, but I'll also be uh, looking at various other pictures and trying to get as many side-on shots as I can get, um, so I can get the angle just right on the yellow ends and all the stripes. Okay, so I've masked up the uh, yellow ends, um, and I've also masked up on the inside of the windows, because uh, I don't want any overspray getting underneath, going inside, coming out of the windows, and uh, marking the white that I've uh, already got. Um, so I've masked all the way along, just used a piece of paper, some Tamiya masking tape. It's quite important I get the angle right on the, uh, this particular piece, because it's going to dictate the angle of the uh, upswept stripes and all of the grey, and basically do the... Uh, the whole end of the model, so it's important this angle's right. I've studied quite a lot of pictures and uh, pictures of uh, the models as well, and I think I've got it about right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray on the warning yellow. Right, so I've given it uh, four coats of uh, warning yellow, and uh, it's now dried. It's quite a nice yellow. Can't see any of the white underneath, looks pretty good. So uh, now I'm going to peel off the masking and then uh, plan. Uh, the next colour, which will be the blue. Okay, so uh, yellow ends are done, and now I'm going to be doing the uh, light blue, um, which is basically a giant uh, rectangle that runs all the way down the side of the model. And it's important, obviously, that the positioning of that is also correct, um, so I'm taking my time with the masking. I've already started, so uh, we've got a nice big bit running along the bottom for the uh, bottom of the blue and I've also threaded some tape through the uh, grills so I can get the uh, correct grills the correct color because uh, there's some grills further down underneath the tape and they'll need to be uh, white or red um, I've loosely fitted the doors as well just so I can get everything lined up for the time being and then uh, when I actually spray it I'll take the doors out again I'm going to be just brush painting the doors separately Okay, so it's all masked up, ready for the blue. I've studied a number of pictures very carefully, including the pictures that I printed off of the actual loco I'm trying to uh, recreate. I've been very careful to make sure that all the masking tape is level and that the white rectangle that will uh, end up being blue is gonna be a nice, straight and true shape because the last thing you want is for uh, it to be taller over here and then narrower in, in the middle and then taller at the end um, which is easily done when you're putting masking tape on. the second coat of blue I've just put on. As you can see from the shine of the light it's uh, gone on really nicely. I'm very impressed with this uh, Phoenix Precision paint. It does seem to go on really well and it also dries rather quickly which is nice. So uh, the colour's pretty much there. I'm going to leave it for a good 20 minutes to harden and then I'm going to give it a third top coat just to make sure I've got everything covered that I need to. Okay, I've left the uh, blue to dry for a couple of hours and uh, it's now touch dry at least, it's not fully hardened yet and I have peeled off the uh, masking tape. Really pleased with how this has come out. It's quite an important stage of the repainting process to get this bit right and you can see the edges have come out really nice and crisp and the overall finish of the paint is really nice. So I'd say we're probably about halfway through. Not too far to go now, but uh, still going to be quite fiddly. Now, ordinarily, the next colour I'd do is the uh, next lightest colour, which in this case would be the red. Um, however, the red stripe is uh, very, very slim, very small, and um, there's quite a lot of white still left on the model, and it's going to be difficult for me to work out exactly where the red stripe needs to go. 
So what I'm actually going to do is do what I've been doing on the coaches and go for the grey stripe along the bottom which will then give me a better idea of where to put the red stripe. So here's one of the uh, coaches I'm in the middle of repainting. Um, these were originally uh, British Rail blue and grey. I've done quite a few of them now, I'm just working my way through the last four. This is the livery we're going to eventually end up at. So uh, I've been doing the grey which allows me to get uh, the red stripe in just the right place. So that will be the next job um, for the uh, 50, I'll put the grey onto there. It also sweeps up the sides here by the yellow so it's uh, going to be uh, probably the next best colour to do. OK so I've done yet more masking and it's now ready to have the uh, dark grey applied along the bottom. You can see also it sweeps up the side here and it keeps the uh, same angle as the yellow ends which is why it's important to get the angle of the yellow ends correct. Uh, this was quite uh, difficult to mask up, took a lot of time again looking at pictures. Um, one of the problems I had was um, depending on what class 50 you're painting um, actually dictates how high up this uh, grey band actually rises. Uh, I've seen two or three pictures of different 50s in the same livery um, but the, uh, the grey stripe is either slightly lower and uh, cuts through the middle of that footstep or actually even higher than this one. Okay, so the uh, grey has dried and I've peeled off the uh, masking tape and uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with the position of the grey. It's uh, quite difficult to work out um, how thick the uh, grey needs to be and uh, how far forward of the window it's going. Um, but uh, based on the pictures and the research I've done so far, I think I'm pretty close. So the next job is to uh, do the red stripe. And now I've got the angle of the grey and I know the distance between uh, the grey and the blue I can uh, do the red stripe a lot more easily I'm going to have a much better idea of where to position it, how thick it needs to be and uh, of course the uh, angles as well coming up the side So far I've made one small correction uh, on the uh, yellow ends I've added some extra white along the top I mistakenly thought that the uh, yellow uh, went over onto the top of this small area here with these two handrails like it does on the revised livery um, but it turns out the original livery didn't actually do that. Um, the uh, white around the windows extended down slightly. Um, it's really difficult to see it in pictures, uh, but I did notice it on a couple. And then looking a bit closer on some other photographs, it is, it is there. If we come up and look at a real picture, you can see just there, running along the top, you can just see the white there as it uh, hangs down onto the front of the loco, like I've done there. Very difficult to see. Um, most pictures were taken in stations in the sunlight, so um, the yellow and the white just sort of merge together and it looks like the whole thing is yellow. So uh, I've made that correction, but apart from that, so far so good. Okay, so it's masked up yet again, and now I'm ready to spray on the red stripe. So there we go, I've peeled off the uh, masking tape. The red stripe's come out quite nicely, looks pretty good small couple of areas that uh, just need to be touched up with a brush but, uh, I was expecting that anyway with it being such a fine stripe uh, so now I've uh, done that uh, the next thing to do is to do the, uh, the black roof and then the overall colour scheme is uh, pretty much complete OK this is the uh, final and uh, probably the easiest uh, bit of the masking and uh, it's now ready to uh, have the roof painted black so what I've done is I've just got some paper and um, some thick masking tape and I've just gone round the model like a curtain effectively so uh, saved a bit of masking tape there.
So there we go. Got a nice uh, black roof, which is uh, currently drying. Giving it about four coats to make sure that it's uh, got into all of the bits of detail on the roof, all of the moulded panels, the uh, fan grill, and exhaust ports, etc. So uh, it's looking pretty good. And that is the last big bit of spraying that I need to do for this particular model. So uh, looking forward to peeling off the masking tape and seeing what it looks like, but I shall leave it for a good hour or so to uh, dry before I do that. The uh, black I used is uh, Revel uh, number 7, just in case you're wondering. Uh, I use a lot of Revel paint as well for general colours. I find it to be uh, a really nice paint in terms of finish. It's very, very smooth, very good quality. It also dries quite quickly. So there we go, it's all dry, I peeled off the uh, masking tape for the roof and uh, that's the last uh, major colour that's been done. Overall I'm very pleased with how it's going so far, it's looking pretty good and more importantly it uh, looks like the uh, pictures I've uh, been studying, it looks uh, nice and realistic. I've got the stripes in pretty much the right place on the side, the angle's pretty good and so is the thickness, so yeah, well pleased with that. So the next job I'm going to do is just quickly go around it with a very fine brush and just correct any small areas where there's been a bit of a, uh, a blemish or a run in the paint. Uh, so you can see for example down here in the corner I need to put a little bit of white into that uh, handrail just to get the, uh, the edge of that uh, red stripe sorted. Okay so I've just gone over the model uh, with a very very small brush and I've sorted out any blemishes and made any small corrections that I need to make. Uh, so a couple of things were the uh, corner of the red stripe where it comes down to the uh, the door that had uh, run on a couple of the corners and uh, some of the uh, vents in the grill they needed to uh, be touched up with some white paint because the blue and the red had bled onto the uh, middle grills and that had happened on both sides. But apart from that um, with the careful masking I did, it's come out uh, pretty well. There aren't really any corrections I've had to make um, that are particularly uh, particularly serious. Just a couple of little spots here and there. And the final thing I've done is I've painted uh, the orange cant rail stripe around uh, the top of the model. Again, I just masked it all the way around the top and just painted it by hand using a, uh, a small brush. You can see it runs along the uh, top of the windscreens as well, just below the uh, marker lights. So that's the uh, final bit of uh, colour that I've needed to add, and uh, it's nice and straight, it's come out nicely. So the next job I'm going to do, although uh, certain colours on the model are already very glossy, uh, particularly the roof, um, I need to give the whole thing a good coat of gloss varnish. Now it's important that I do that so that I can apply the, uh, the numbers, the transfer, so the network southeast lettering, the number of the loco and various other small transfers and bits of detail. Um, you'll get the best finish with transfers if you paint the model with gloss varnish beforehand. This is the uh, gloss varnish that I use, it's uh, done by Phoenix as is the majority of the paint I've used so far for this uh, respray and uh, these varnishes come pre-finned ready for uh, airbrushing so I literally just have to pour um, the amount I need out of the tin and I can just go straight ahead and start uh, airbrushing the model. Um, all of the paint um, you need to thin and I tend to thin the paint with 50% uh, paint to 50% thinner. Um, if I want to do thinner coats or I'm doing a first, first coat um, I might uh, thin the paint a little more. Okay so giving it a coat of gloss varnish, gave it two coats in the end. And you can see it's nice and shiny so that it's now ready to have the uh, transfers applied. I've got uh, pretty much everything I need here. It's going to take me quite a while to apply all of it. Um, some people don't like doing the transfers, find them quite fiddly and time consuming but uh, I thought I actually quite enjoy it. It's nice to uh, sit down with the model after you've painted it and just sit there and take your time and just get all the transfers put in the right place. You just need some warm water for the transfers to uh, detach them from the, uh, the paper that they're printed onto. And uh, Fox Transfers recommend that you add a dash of uh, washing up liquid to the water 
um, for their particular transfers. So I guess it does something to the glue or something, makes them uh, work a bit better. So uh, that's what I've done. So uh, I shall now get started. There's the first one done. You can see why you paint the model gloss now. You can't see any of the uh, carrier film around the transfer. It blends in quite nicely. This is the hardest transfer to do. I don't particularly enjoy the actually putting this one on because it's so long. Uh, but uh, you just have to take your time. And at the end of the day, at least you've only got to do two. Not much left to do on this side, got the uh, overhead warning flashes that go uh, up in the top corner just here, up in this uh, area here, you've got one at each end, and uh, I'll just need to put the etched plate on which goes round here somewhere. And finally, I need to put on the etched plate. I usually just apply these with a very small piece of masking tape. Sorry, not masking tape, double sided um, sticky tape. And before pushing it down, I'll just check that it is in the right place. So there we go, that's this side done. There isn't actually too many transfers to put on the 50. The uh, the really tricky bit is is the uh, the actual paint job itself. But in terms of transfers, there's not too much. But it is nice to uh, have the etch plate in as well. It does look good. Stands a nice little bit of detail. You don't notice it when the train's running round, but when uh, you're at track level or you're close up with cameras and stuff, you do notice things like that. OK, so uh, done all the transfers. There aren't too many, to be honest, it's not too bad. On the front, you just have some uh, overhead warding flashes and the, uh, the Network South East emblem on the head code box. That's pretty much it. Some 50s in this colour had a locomotive data panel over in this corner, but uh, this particular 50 never carried one when it was in this livery, so um, to keep it prototypical, I've uh, deliberately left off any... Uh, locomotive data panels. 
So the next thing to do is to give the whole thing a coat of matte varnish and then I can finally put the body shell back together and then put it on the uh, locomotive. Okay, so uh, it's been a while since you last saw it and uh, what I've basically been doing is just reattaching all of the parts um, that were separate to the model that I took off. So I have uh, reattached the interior, all the windows, with the exception of the uh, windows on the doors, I haven't done those just yet. Uh, reattached the uh, detail on the front and just given them a quick lick of orange paint because they were a little bit tatty. Um, whilst you're doing this it's quite uh, easy to scratch the model to damage it. You're rolling it over and pressing uh, you know, glass into the uh, into the window apertures and pushing the handrails down here into the side so uh, you have to be careful but it's inevitable that you'll uh, do a little bit of damage. Um, so there was a little bit of damage up here where uh, just a little bit of the uh, black chipped off. So I've just touched it up and what I'll basically do is uh, just give the whole thing another coat of uh, matte varnish when it's done. I'll just uh, mask up the windows. I've painted the doors by hand. They look pretty good. They're just drying at the moment. But uh, those doors uh, at the moment they're glossy. Um, so they need a coat of matte varnish anyway, so uh, I'm just going around the model and just uh, touching up any small areas that might uh, have got damaged or I've missed during the painting process. And then uh, when I give it a final coat of matte varnish and add the exhaust dirt to the roof, it'll be uh, pretty much complete. Okay, so it's been about uh, two weeks and uh, I haven't really done too much. I've uh, added some detail to the front of the buffer beam and uh, I've added a little bit of orange paint to some of the connectors it was looking a bit tired but apart from that it's as it was it's all finished uh, the reason why it's been a while is because obviously I've repainted it into this livery it's nice if it actually has some coaches to pull so I've been working on repainting all the coaches and there were quite a lot of coaches that needed to be done but uh, finally, at long last, I've got to the end. So there you go, the model is finished. And that is my uh, tutorial on uh, how I respray my locomotives. As you can see, it looks quite different now. I've put a, uh, another Class 50 on the left hand side just to uh, show the difference in what I'm tried uh, what I've tried to achieve so the repainted loco is uh, in the original network southeast livery with the upswept stripes and then the 50 on the left hand side is in the revised livery that came a couple of years later you can see the stripe isn't upswept and the blue is a lot darker so that was uh, the difference that I was trying to achieve there